Hey guys, Lauren Losing, and welcome back to my channel where I make disgusting videos uh, in makeup that I didn't wash off yesterday. Um, okay, so this video was inspired by basically me being around one week post-op for my plastics. I am now about a week and a half post-op. And I started noticing things that I feel like people who either aren't in the medical community or even people who are in the medical community and aren't familiar with surgery and stuff like that, um, that you might freak out about soon post-op that aren't things worth freaking out about, I guess. Um, let me preface this by saying if you are worried about anything, even anything that I list here, feel free to contact your doctor. If you are worried about anything, contact your doctor. But these are just a few things that I have come across that maybe your surgeon didn't warn you about might happen. Um, they maybe didn't think of telling you that these things may happen and that you may feel like they're out of the ordinary, but they're actually not. So I have a little list over here so that I wouldn't forget anything. And then anything that I leave out of people who did have plastic surgery, or maybe you work for a plastic surgeon or something like that, anything that I leave out that is like something not to freak out about, feel free to leave it in the comments. And oh, let me just show these really quickly. Um, I decided to take a little time off from my binder and my uh, arm compression. So I do still have my uh, Steri strips on and like a bandage under here, but and that's pretty bruised still right there. But these are what my arms look like about, what am I, like day 10 or day 11 post-op. So I'm pretty happy with that. I will be doing a video on Wednesday um, for like a plastics and VSG update, but let's just get into this now. So the first thing I wrote down is a bumpy incision. So when I had my uh, dressings changed on my arms, uh, my steri strips, I noticed that there are some places where my incision lays flat and there are some places where my incision is very bumpy right now. Don't freak out about that. That does not mean that when you are fully healed you will have this crazy bumpy side road that needs construction. <laughs> Weird analogy, but um, incision. That is something that as you heal, as your scar heals, as time goes on, it should correct itself. And then also after you are, after your incision is fully closed and healed, there are things that you can do to also help that along, like massage and scar cream and all that. So if your incision is bumpy anywhere, don't freak out. That's completely normal, very soon post-op. Um, openings in your incision. Also. This is soon post-op and you know, you can have openings that happen, excuse me, I'm also in the clothes that I slept in last night so I'm like finding like drool on me, sorry. <laughs> um, so you, as your dressings are changed, you might find places where it's completely healed or, I mean, I'm not completely healed anywhere right now, this soon post-op, but you might find places that are more open than others still completely normal. You should always have a dressing or a covering on something that is open because that means that um, that is a great entrance for bacteria. So what my nurse at my plastic surgeon's office said is her rule of thumb is if your incision is talking to you, like you can see in, it needs to be covered. Um, because I asked basically like, if these fall off, do I need to recover them? And she said, if it's talking to you, yes. If it's closed, no. That's something to mention. Saturated dressings. Um, before you leave the hospital, it would be good to ask if a dressing gets saturated, if you need to, when I say saturated, I mean in discharge, um, clear discharge, bloody discharge, whatever. Um, if a dressing gets saturated, if you need to clean it. They might tell you no because you might have a, you might have a, um, 
appointment pretty soon post-op where someone who is a professional can change it. Um, or they, sh they should anyway send you home with some dressing supplies. And But if you see a saturated dressing, don't freak out unless it's like blood pouring down your side. Then maybe contact someone. I had a few saturated dressings. I had one from um, one up here from where my arm drain was coming out and I had one down here a couple times that I changed myself um, from where a drain was taken out. But um, saturated dressings very soon post-op is a normal thing. Like I said, just, you know, if you change it, keep your eye on how soon after it's becoming saturated again. Always um, keep an eye out for, I mean, I have a list of things later for you to worry about, but I'll mention some things here. I mean, on any dressing change, just keep an eye out for yellow or green discharge and a really bad smell. Um, okay. Long stitches. Um, you might notice when dressings are changed or even things, maybe some areas that aren't covered that you might have some long stitches uh, if you feel comfortable and you're okay trimming them yourself that is perfectly fine um, or when you go to your doctor they can trim them for you but some long stitches sticking out it might look like kind of like fishing twine or fishing line um, those are the dissolvable stitches totally normal to have some long stitches sticking out um, stitches popping. Um, I would say no sooner than like one week post-op, but my day seven post-op, I went to reach for my drink and I felt two very distinct stitches pop in my back, meaning I felt them break. I did freak out. <laughs> I had an internal freak out until I went to the bathroom, lifted up my shirt, looked at where I felt them pop, made sure that my incision was not open and was not draining or anything like that. It was still closed. So your, your sutures that you are closed with are going to be dissolving sutures. Around one week is when the first ones will start to dissolve. So because I felt them pop, yes, that means that I you know, strained them, but that means that they were starting to dissolve at one, like at a part in the suture. And then just because I moved a certain way, they, they broke. Um, so as long as you're, if you feel that happen, as long as you look at the incision and it's not like open, that's totally fine. Um, more output into your drains after you have a day of moving more after a shower that is normal especially after your first shower especially if you wait a little while and have a shower um the warmth warmth from the water the moving around more it's going to loosen some stuff up in your the opening to your drains in your abdomen that's where I know mine at least I didn't have more drainage in my arms um, I had a lot of output into one of my drains after my first shower and I did freak out a little bit I luckily had my doctor's appointment that day and they told me that was completely normal and then um, so I've only had two showers since surgery I am doing like a body and face wipe down in between um, but I don't like, I don't want to have to change all of these dressings, like, in the places where I have gauze, like, every single day. Too annoying. Um, so I did notice, um, also after my second shower that I had more output into one of my drains. It's just, it's normal. It's warm. It gets things moving. Normal. Um, <laughs> funky boob shape and uneven boobs. So, in a bra, my boobs look great. They look nice and round. They look even. When I take off a bra, they're a little funky shaped. They're high. They definitely have not dropped yet. 
there is a bit of a bubble here, especially on the right breast, my right breast. So it used to be that my left breast was larger than my right. Currently, where I'm at right now, my right breast is larger than my left. That does not mean that in two months, I'm gonna have uneven breasts. It might. No one's gonna have exactly the same left and right breast, no one. Um, unless you started with absolutely no breast tissue and they put exactly the same breast implant size in both of, you know, in both sides, you're gonna have some slight unevenness. But at this point, it's really unfair and really inaccurate for me to judge where my breasts are gonna end up. Breast implants, especially like, no matter what, but especially sub muscular, so under the muscle, especially with a lift, they need time to for the swelling to go down, for them to drop into the place that they're supposed to be. So if you, the first time you see your breasts after having plastic surgery, you're like, oh my God, these are not what I wanted. That's not what you're gonna end up with. So take a deep breath, give it time, it'll be okay. That's pretty much my list of things to not freak out about. So things to worry about. Worry about a fever, not just a fever though. I had a low grade fever for pretty much the whole time I was in the hospital. And I mean, I was only in the hospital for two days, uh, one night. And then I also probably had a low grade fever for the first couple days that I was home. That is because you have so much trauma to your body that, you know, it's trying to recover. If you have a fever like over 101, around 101, in conjunction with other things like redness with swelling and heat somewhere, um, you're gonna have, you might have some redness from the irritation, you might, you're going to have swelling. But if you notice like your right breast is very swollen and there is redness and heat around the incision, that is a sign of an infection starting or having a problem. Um, all, also, the things that I already mentioned, smelly discharge, yellow and green discharge. These things all together or grouped slightly are all signs of infection and they are definitely something to call your doctor about. But like I already mentioned, if you are worried about anything, even if it's on my little list of things to not freak out about, if you are worried, if you are freaking out, call your doctor. No shame in just double checking. All right guys, so that is my video. Hopefully you'll join me in a couple days when I make my update. So until next time.